Okay, fractal analysis. This shouldn't be too bad. Fractals are pretty awesome. Um, let's see, let's see. Okay, this seems like a good source. And all of analysis, um, one and two in a couple pages, not bad. All right, Alex said he wanted me to read chapter two. That's about measuring dimensions of fractals or something like that. Uh oh, look at this crazy symbols. I have no idea what that means. You might even need a whole other book to understand that. Like maybe this one that Alex sent me. Okay, what should I talk to you instead since I don't understand that yet? I know, how about Sierpinski's gasket again? You remember that one. I showed you that one last week. Okay, I'm going to need some scrap paper here. This midterm, if I oh, it's a rough copy, is not going to be needed. I can draw all over that. All right, let's see. Three points, because that's going to be the triangle for my Sierpinski's gasket. Uh, roughly um, equilateral, whatever. I'm not measuring. All right, straight lines, though. That'll make it prettier looking. Okay, and one more line, and... I've got my triangle. That's pretty cool. What should I do now? I know I'll take about half of it. Let's say if I take, if I'm scaling down by a half, what will that give me? And I'm scaling towards one point. Okay, that's cool. One half of one triangle. Let's do that again and again. Okay, that's pretty cool. I've got three triangles now. Let's keep going. A couple more. Yeah, that looks pretty like pretty much like contractive mapping there. Oh, all the points are getting closer together, but let's do it again, except for this time pick a different point on my triangle. So this one's going to be pink. So here's a pink triangle that's half the size of my total triangle. That's pretty cool. But this is contractive mapping, remember? So let's go smaller and go infinitely many smaller. So I've got infinitely many little triangles inside my big triangle. And now one more time, I'm going to go do contractive mapping up towards my third point on my triangle. So there's my third triangle, and I'm cutting it in half again and again and again and infinitely many times. Uh, yeah, but this doesn't look much like the Serpentis gasket, so maybe I've got to do it again except for I look at every triangle I've just made as its own little mini original triangle. And so maybe I've got to make a bunch of little triangles inside my bigger triangles, because that's what a fractal is all about anyway, making little things inside of bigger things that really all look the same when you zoom in. Okay, let's see. I could keep going on like this for a while. Lots more triangles. Uh, they're not looking at too equilateral anymore, but that's okay. You get the idea. More triangles. That looks pretty cool, right? So let's see, maybe you don't believe me. Oops, that was a practice one, I didn't mean to show you that. Okay, maybe you don't believe me that this is all contraction mapping. So let's do a little bit of algebra now. Okay, let's think of what the sequence for this would look like. Remember that contraction mapping theorem that the sequence goes x, f of x, f of f of x, f of f of f of x, but wait a minute, what's f of x anyway? Um, well, I'm taking half of a triangle. So f of x probably looks a little something like this. If I have a as the point that I'm going towards, and x is whatever I'm, the point I'm putting in, it's going to be x plus a divided by 2. So what's f of y? Well, that's going to be y plus a divided by 2. Okay, so remember that, con what's the theorem for contraction mapping? I need it to be true that the absolute value of f of x minus f of y is less than or equal to c times x minus y. Okay, well, what's f of x? I know that. That's x plus a over 2. What's f of y? I know that. That's y plus a over 2. All, all less than c times x minus y. Hmm, okay, well, now it looks like I need to do some algebra here. So what do I do? I need to get over like terms. So I've got... Oh, I'm already over like terms. I forgot. <laughs> so now, a little bit of algebra. Oh, yay, the a's cancel out. So now I've got x minus y over 2 is less than or equal to c times x minus y. That's pretty nice. What happens if I bring out that 2? Well, so I've got 1 half times x minus y. Well, gee, that equals c times x minus y if you let c equal 1 half, which is good because 1 half is a number between 0 and 1, and that's what we want for c. So to now, we've got our contraction mapping theorem. That's awesome. But wait a minute. Let's go back to that sequence and make sure everything follows through. Because I remember that sequence needs to converge to something. So let's see, what's x? All right, here's x. What's f of x? Well, I remember that's x plus a over 2, but wait a minute. What's f of f of x? That's got to be something. That's got to be x plus a over 2 plus a over 2. 
Uh oh, it looks like I'm gonna have to do some more algebra. Okay, now I'm gonna need to put over like denominators. All right, a little bit of algebra here. I hope I can do my math correctly. And now we've got x plus 3a over 4 as our third term in the sequence. And I happen to have done this already, and I know that the next term is going to be x plus 7a over 8. And I know that the next term is going to be 2, so I can come up with a general formula for every term, which is x plus 2 to the n minus 1 times a all over 2 to the n. And you can, and I don't know what's going to happen. Does this converge to something? You can ask that helpful visitor guy from, who was in Calc 2 and should know the answer, and he said it didn't converge, but I don't believe him, because let's look at this. x over 2 to the n plus 2 to the n minus 1 over a over 2 to the n. Well, gee, that looks a lot like it converges to a. And that makes a lot of sense anyway, because we need it to converge to something, and we need it to have a fixed point. And what's f of a anyway? Well, f of a equals a, so that looks like it's our fixed point. Yay! So, in conclusion, what have we done? Well, we've had a set of contraction mapping functions acting on a vector space to create a, vec to create a fractal, and that is all called iterated function systems.